What is the future of research in age-related macular degeneration and therapy development? Here we see in sec section through the choroid and the RPE uh, from an eye. We can see Brooks membrane, the choriocapillaries, and what becomes evident is that we have a very high pigmentation in the choroid consisting here from melanocytes. Also in the RPE we have many melanin granules and in this uh, talk we will focus on pigmentation in the retinal pigment epithelium. During aging the melanosomes disappear in the retinal pigment epithelium like they do in graying hairs. Instead of this melanolipofuscine develops. The origin of melanolipofuscine is still unknown, so unbelievable it is, but um, the melanolipofuscine is very important and I will show you um, this as an example in a Stargate mouse model. Here you can see the typical melanin, melanolipofuscine granules consisting from a melanin core and a random of lipofuscine. What you can see here is an RPE cell from an ABCA4 knockout mouse. These mice have a genetic de defect. Due to this defect, they accumulate high amounts of lipofuscine in the RPE cells. Interestingly, this lipofuscine fuses with melanosomes and form, um, forms melanolipofuscine. This is very important and, to my understanding, the key for understanding diseases like age-related macular degeneration. During degradation of this toxic lipofuscine, radicals are formed and these radicals are absorbed by the melanosomes and by doing this they protect the RPE cell cytoplasma from damage. The situation is completely different in albino ABCR4 knockout mice, they have the same genetic defect but they don't have melanosomes and you can see directly the difference here these lipofuscine granules look completely different um, they lost membranes um, they are not clearly defined compared to these lysosomes in the pigmented um, mouse and um, probably both uh, of these uh, materials inside the lysosomes consist from lipofuscine and bisretinoids. Also, also they look completely different and um, yeah, probably they are also chemically different. Interestingly, if you compare the retinal degeneration in these two mouse strains, we can see that the pigmented um, ABCR4 knockout mice don't develop retinal pathology. This what you see, the small decline is normal aging uh, over, the, over the time. In the albinos it's completely different. We have a huge degeneration, loss of photoreceptors and this without any doubt is caused by um, the melanin pigmentation in the pigmented line. What may be the mechanism? Melanosomes are lysosomes and in melanosomes all lysosomal enzymes are present to degrade lipids and proteins and so on. Therefore it is not surprising that lipid hydroperoxides and bisretinoids are transported into the melanosomes and can be degraded there. During degradation of bisretinoids and peroxides, radicals are formed and absorbed by melanin, which protects the cells from oxidative stress. 
If degradation of lipid hydroperoxides and bisretinoids is incomplete, melanolipofuscin granules develop. During aging or in Stargardt disease, melanosomes become exhausted and lost the ability to absorb radicals. In these melanolipofuscin granules, blue light induce radical formation and from lipofuscin and damage the cytoplasmic molecules in RPE cells and that of RPE cells is the consequence. In conclusion, electron microscopy is important in retinal research. RPE melanosomes are involved in degradation and detoxification of bisretinoids and lipid hydroperoxides and other compounds. If melanosomes do not work properly, malfunction of the retinal pigment epithelium and retinal degeneration as an age-related macular degeneration is the consequence. A large body of evidence already exists that this hypothesis is true. Future research and therapy will focus on melanosomes. Thank you very much for attention.